Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to show you how to uh, model this shape that you see here. Um, this is a render I did of a nested dodecahedron um, shape. Uh, you can see here that it consists of um, concentric uh, dodecahedron objects all nested within each other and it's it consists of one solid uh, object however because each uh, polyhedra is connected with uh, a bridge which could be um, inevitably 3d printed or used in any way you'd like um, at first glance the object probably looks a little daunting um, you know it's it's you know quite complex in its appearance However, uh, it's fairly easy to achieve, um, and with just a few tools in 3ds Max, we, we should be able to uh, to get this shape fairly quickly. Um, I'll bring up 3ds Max here, and you can see the shape. This is the shape that I had rendered um, in that previous picture, um, and you can get a better look at how how it's made up here. All right, so the first thing to do is go into the extended primitives, go to the Hydra, and just bring it up into the scene. Um, and we'll just move it up on the grid a little bit here. Okay, so um, what we have here is just the Dodecaicos family is about is about right. So a Q parameter of 0 0.5 and a P parameter of 0 0.2 will give you this result and this is what I started out with in the previous object okay and then we'll go here to uh, edit poly and we'll select all of the polygons and we'll apply an inset uh, by polygon and we'll just bring this down um, if you're modeling to scale I, this is this is not uh, set to scale however I am using centimeters in the scene um, so I just brought it down three centimeters um, so that you have an outline of the edges like this okay and then go ahead and remove those faces and that leaves you with this skeletal uh, one-sided object all right and uh, this is our base and uh, from here we can add a shell modifier um, my previous settings are still retained here and what I have is um, an inner amount of about 4 to 4.7 um, you don't want to go too too high on this inner amount because what happens is the edges begin to squeeze together and you'll have some overlapping edges if you go too far um, but the uh, you can compensate that by moving the outer amount out a little bit. You want an object that's fairly thick in this ar area, uh, you know, around these edges, uh, and that'll help, especially if you're 3D. If your ultimate goal is to 3D print the object, um, you'll be able to uh, later on apply, uh, you know, uh, another shell to hollow it out and uh, in order to do that you need a little bit extra thickness at this stage however you know the extra thickness even if you're not 3d printing um, just provides a, a nice aesthetic when you go to uh, subdivide as well so you know, I like it a little thicker so my inner amount is uh, 4 4.5 I'll go with in this case and I'll go with an outer amount uh, let's go with 3 okay all right, so we have a fairly thick uh, dodecahedron here. All right, now at this stage, we can go ahead and apply another edit poly modifier. And uh, we'll go ahead and on this level, uh, we'll switch to our scale tool. And holding down shift, we'll scale down a copy. All right, and we'll scale it down to about 80%. All right, and then release and you'll see the uh, clone options pop up and we wanted a copy you don't want an instance um, and we'll give it a number of copies of three and then just click OK and there's your concentric objects all right all scaled within 80% of each other 
All right. Now the trick here is, and, and this is uh, the part that um, you know at first might might baffle someone because you're thinking, well, I'm going to have to go in here and manually bridge all of these uh, all of these faces together, and and that is in fact what needs to be done. However. Um, we're going to take a little shortcut uh, to doing that uh, and bridge them all at once. Um, however, it's it's difficult, as you can see, to select faces that are that are uh, you know hidden in inside here, and, and and there's different ways we can go about you know you know hiding some of the outer objects and whatnot. But uh, then there's the problem of maintaining the selections that you choose. And I'll show you how to uh, maintain the selections as you go onto each object and um, and select the faces you want to bridge. All right, so we'll start out on the first object here. All right, and and before we do anything else, in order to bridge these objects together, they need to be a part of the same object. Currently, they are just copies of each other and separate objects. So we select the first object and. Um, we go to our attach here in the edit poly modifier and uh, just uh, tap on the little uh, square icon that says attach list and that'll bring up your list of objects in the scene and uh, just go ahead and highlight uh, the three uh, subsequent objects and then click attach. Now we have just one object that can be uh, manipulated and bridged together. All right, so. Let's go about selecting our polygons all right, for the bridge operation. And we're going to do our bridge in this case. Uh, I mean, you have your option here. You could, you can do your bridge on, on any, any one of these, uh, these face assemblies uh, along the object. However, uh, you know, in, in the case of my example here, um, I found it, uh, it looked best when we, uh, when we bridged the faces that uh, corresponded with this particular uh, face assembly on the object. So obviously on the first outer shell uh, we, we don't need to select the, the outside of, of this first object. We need the inner one. So what we'll do here is we'll just um, select the entire element all right, and then uh, down here in the edit poly parameters, just hide unselected, and that removes all of the all of the inner objects. Okay, and then um, we can go to uh, face mode and begin to select the faces that we want to bridge to the next object. All right, so in this case, um, that would be. That would be all of these faces inside here, all, right, all of these uh, hexagonal faces here. All right, so we can select a few of them manually and then try our uh, select similar to see if that grabs all of them. And in this case, it looks like it worked. So, all right, we have all of them selected. Now, if we were to um, go ahead and try to select faces on, on the next object and hide this object, uh, it would begin to get complex and uh, we might lose some of our selections on, on the previous uh, object and uh, it just gets all messy. So what we're going to do here is use a feature in 3ds Max called uh, uh, Named Selection Sets and that's going to allow us to store um, any number of selections that we make on objects and store them and then regardless of whether we keep these selected later on or not we can always recall them from the list that we've saved all right so um, that's what we're going to do here and in order to use them we have our selections made on the first object we'll just go up to our text field up here that says create a, a, a selection set and just uh, put your cursor in there and start to type and I'll just call this one selection 01 and then hit enter. All right, so now that selection, that named selection is stored and uh, we can go ahead now and unhide all. All right, and we could feel free to uh, deselect those because we have them stored so we can recall them. 
All right, so the next step now is to go ahead and select the, uh, the next uh, subsequent concentric uh, dodecahedron. And same procedure as before, just hide all the unselected. Now on this one, since we're bridging from the inside of the first one to the outside of this one, we're going to need to select all of the uh, all of the outside faces around the same selection sets. All right, so all around these same shapes here. All right, so all of the uh, whoops, let me undo that. All of these outside um, hexagons on this one. All right, so I selected a few here, and then I'll go on the inside because this one will be also attached to something underneath. I'll select some of these on the inside as well. All right. Um, just like that. And then I'll just use our uh, select similar to grab them all and just verify that it has indeed grabbed all of the selections we need. Looks like it worked. All right, so I'm going to go up here again to our named selection sets, and I'm going to type in selection 2 and hit enter. Okay, so you can see now in the drop down we have selection 1 and selection 2. All right, so we can go ahead now that we've done that, we can go ahead and unhide all. All right, and um, and then we can go down to the next one, the third one, and we could uh, go ahead and hide unselected again. All right, and we'll go down to the faces. And again, on this one, we need the outside and inside faces. Okay, so I'm just going to try it with uh, by selecting one on each side and see if that worked, and it did. So it selected similar on the outside and inside. All right. So now I'm going to uh, make another selection, so or another named uh, selection set. So selection 03, hit enter. Okay. Now I can safely bring back all of my hidden objects. Unhide all. All right, and. Um, what we'll do here is go down to the final object in the set and we'll hide unselected. All right. And on this one, we only need to select the outside uh, polygons. We do not need the inside ones. They won't be connected to anything. So we'll just go ahead and make that selection. Select similar captured all of them and that's what we want so then we'll make another named selection set selection 04 in this case and hit enter all right so I can go ahead and unhide everything now all right and now what we're going to do is it, it, I'm working in uh, 3ds max 2012 64-bit um, I plan to upgrade to 2016 soon. However, um, if you're on a newer version of 3ds Max, you should be able to just hold down Control and select uh, multiple selections here. Okay, up in this in the uh, named selection sets, just by holding down Control, or perhaps it's Shift. I'm I'm not positive which one it is, but you should be able to select multiple. However, in uh, earlier versions of 3ds Max, like the one I'm using here, um, that is impossible from this selection drop-down. So what we're going to do instead is go into the icon that's right next to the text field, and that opens up the Edit Name Selections box. And I'm going to select all of these uh, named selections, and I'm going to hit Combine. And then I'm going to give the combination its own name. So I'll just name it Combined, hit OK, and then I'm going to select the Combined. Actually, I'll select it from out here, 
All right, so combined. And there are all the selections that we made on every object. Okay? So what we can do from here, now that we have all these selections nice and easily done, is just you go ahead and uh, bring up our bridge tool. And um, I'll give it two segments and then uh, a little bit of a taper in the other direction, obviously, just like that. And then I'll accept that. And uh, once that's done, what we should have here is um, a solid object once I use the uh, Turbo Smooth to smooth it out. You can see what we have, and I'll give it two iterations. And uh, there's our object. All right, so it's all connected. It's one object. Um, in fact, I think if you if you're going to do this tutorial, you might want to um, at the point which you you make your your duplicates of the first object, you might want to uh, consider going a little bit more than 80%. I think on the first example I had gone about 70% uh, with the uh, holding down shift with the scale tool to make our, our the copies, the initial copies. I think 70% would give a, a little bit better result. You can see that the bridges here are just a little bit uh, shorter uh, than, the, uh, than the first example right here so that was uh, that was the difference there but otherwise it's the exact same procedure and uh, in the same result I'll go one more iteration just to smooth that out a little better okay so here it is and that's uh, that's pretty much how we achieve this um, using the name selection sets uh, very helpful little tool here to uh, simplify selections and create uh, these complex objects. All right. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions regarding this procedure, I know you know this was a little bit uh, you know out of the ordinary as far as the tutorials I'd been giving before. So if you have any questions or you got stuck anywhere, just you know leave me a message uh, in the comments or. Um, note me on YouTube or, or one of the forums that, I, that I'm on and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you and help you out if you want to create this, uh, this object. All right, and, and this procedure will work not only with a dodecahedron but uh, you know any kind of uh, platonic solid or, uh, or any kind of object that you want to uh, that you want to create a similar effect. All right, so this is just one example. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And keep on the lookout for many more uh, videos to come. I appreciate it. See you soon.